Hi everyone, today we are going to be learning about work and energy with AP Physics C. I hope you guys are ready. Uh, this is a, actually a pretty tough chapter, I believe. We're going to start with energy, but work gets a little bit more tough. Alright, so if you want to pause this and write this down, you can. But we are mainly going to be focusing on the example problems. Okay, so potential and kinetic energy for today. So a block slides down a frictionless ramp. If the ramp is angled at 17 degrees and its length is 30 meters, find the speed of the block at the bottom of the ramp. Assume it started from rest. Okay, so let's just draw this ramp quickly. 17 degrees. We have a block here. We know that the ramp. Is, has a length of 30 meters. So we want to know how fast it's going at the bottom. Before we can find that, we need to figure out what the height is of this box at the very beginning. So I'm going to do 30 times sine of 17. And I get 8.77 meters. 8.77 meters. Now that I know that, we're going to do mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. And since this is frictionless, it's not going to be losing any energy at all. So how I like to do these kind of problems is potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. And I like to think about what do we have and what don't we have. So at the beginning, there is potential energy, so MGH. At the beginning, there is no kinetic energy because it starts from rest, so that's going to be zero. At the end, it's going to be at the very bottom, so there's no potential energy. At the end, it is moving with a certain speed, so there is kinetic energy, so one half mv final squared. What we notice is that m's cancel out right here, and then we can start to solve this. 10 times height, 8.77, is equal to one half vf squared. And now we can find what VF is. So 87.7 times 2 square root. We get 13.24 meters per second. 13.24 meters per second. Oh, my cat is perfect. There you go. There you go, kitty. Okay. So that's what we should get. Okay. Moving on. Looking at the figure below, which ball will be going the fastest at the end of the ramp? Assume that both ramps are frictionless. So we have ball one, ball two, frictionless, so it actually won't be rolling. But what we should know is they start at the same height here. And they also end at the same height here. So it will be going the fastest, the ball over here, but it'll also start to slow down as it goes up. And what we know is they both have the same potential energy at the beginning and the same kinetic energy at the beginning. So at the bottom here, they're gonna have the same amount of energy because they'll also have the same amount of potential energy at the end. So uh, since energy is conserved, since they start and end at the same height, they will both have the same uh, speed at the very at the end, okay? Because they'll have the same amount of kinetic energy at the bottom. All right, I hope that makes sense. Moving on. So it doesn't actually matter what the path is. So it could have been like, if it's frictionless and ended right there, it'll have the same velocity at the end. Okay, one might take longer, but it'll have the same velocity at the end. All right, moving on. All right, let's look at example number two. A roller coaster is at rest at an elevation above ground of 26 meters. It coasts down the slope and goes up a hill. The top of the hill is at an elevation of 16 meters, whereas the speed of the car at the top of the hill assume friction is negligible. So I'm just going to roughly draw this like this. Uh, it starts at 26 meters above the ground, and then it ends at 16 meters above over here. So this is the roller coaster. Uh, burr, burr, burr. So first thing we're going to start out with is drawing the zero line. So I like to always put the zero line at the lowest point. So uh, the lowest point the object is going to go. So we're just going to put it like all the way at the bottom here. So zero line right here. You could actually put it anywhere you want. You could put it up here. You could even put it up here. So you can put the zero line wherever you want. But once you set it, you want to set all the potential energy and everything like that at that point. So set the zero line. That's the first thing you want to do. <laughs> and then let's solve this problem. So remember, energy is conserved because that we have no friction. So let's try to think about everything. We have potential energy initial 
plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. At the very beginning, there's potential energy. So this is mass, m, gravity, 10, height, uh, 26. Plus kinetic energy at the very beginning. It starts at rest, so this will just be zero. And there is potential energy at the end because we made the zero line over here. So we have mass, 10, gravity, uh, whoops, mass times gravity, 10, height, 16, plus one half m v squared. We can see that the mass cancels out because it's in every single part of this equation. And let's see if we could do uh, solve it from here. 10 minus 10 times 16 uh, times 2 square root. And we get velocity is equal to 14.14 .14 meters per second. Okay, let's look at this. Two stones, one of mass m and the other of mass 2m, are thrown directly upward with the same speed. Which statement is true? Okay, so let's look at this. So we have this. Uh, oh, whoops, two stones, mass m and 2m. Okay, so first scenario, mass m thrown upwards. Next one, 2m thrown upwards, same speed, so it goes up to the same height. The heaviest stone will go higher than the lighter stone. Now, if they're thrown at the same speed, then that means they'll go to the same height, so not that one. Both stones have reached the same height because they both had the same kinetic energy. Well, if they're thrown at the same speed and kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared, then that means the second one that has more mass will have more kinetic energy. So that's not true. At the highest point, both stones will have the same gravitational potential energy. So they'll both have the same height, but the second one has more mass, so it won't have the sec uh, it won't have the same gravitational potential. At the highest point, the heavy stone will have twice the gravitational potential energy. Yes, because since it has the same height, same gravity, but twice the amount of mass as the first one, this will have twice the amount of potential energy. Okay. Moving on. A girl throws a stone from a bridge. Which way should she throw the water? Uh, should she throw the stone, probably, so that the speed of the stone will be the greatest when it hits the water? The stone will be thrown uh, with the same initial speed in each case. Okay, so let's think about this. So, from a bridge. So we're going to put it on a cliff. Should she throw it straight up? So then it goes like this. Should she throw it straight down? So it goes like this. Should it throw out at a 45 degree angle? So it goes like this. Or thrown horizontally? So it goes like this. Okay, so we, those are for, or E, the speed will be the same no matter how she throws it. So again, we want to know what the speed is going to be the greatest at the very bottom. And how we want to think about this is with energy. So no matter how you throw it, the potential energy of the stone is going to be the same because it has the same, it has the same starting height. And the kinetic energy is going to be the same because it has the same initial velocity. Whether you throw it up, down, to the right, angled, it's going to be the same. And what that means is at the very bottom, there's no potential energy because it's at the bottom, but it's all going to turn to kinetic energy. And what that also means is since energy is conserved, it doesn't matter how you throw it, it'll have the same kinetic energy at the bottom, which means it'll have the same speed at the bottom. Okay, so it would be E. All right, example number three. This one's going to be a bit difficult, so stay with me as I do this. An 8 meter rod is pinned to a frictionless pivot as shown in the figure. Okay, so this is the pivot right here. A mass of 4 kilograms is attached to the end of the rod. If the rod is released from the point as shown in the diagram, what will be the tension in the rod when it passes through the lowest point? Okay, so we want to know what the tension is at the lowest point over here. What we should know is since this is 8 meters, that means over here is also 8 meters. So we want to know kind of how high this falls. So we want to find this height right here. So if this is 8 meters, and that's 30 degrees, sine of 30 times 8, that means this is 4 meters. First thing we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what this speed is at the very bottom here. So I'm going to do again mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. I'm going to do potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. So at the very beginning, it starts from rest, so that's just 0. But it has a height, and I'll put the zero line all the way over here, the lowest point the object's going to go. 
Then I'm going to make this potential energy to be, uh, I mean, mass is going to be 4. Gravity is 10. And the height is going to be 8 plus 4, which is 12. No kinetic energy, so that's 0. At the end, there's no potential energy because it's at the 0 line. And then kinetic energy, 1 half m for v squared. Uh, force cancel out, and let's see what we can do. 10 times 12 times 2 square root. And we see the velocity is equal to 15.49 meters per second. However, it's not looking for that. We're looking for the force of tension. So what we should know is there's a force of gravity going down and a force of tension going up. So we're actually going to be doing some uniform circular motion with this. And uniform circular motion is very popular in uh, this chapter with uh, energy. So just keep that in mind. So mass times acceleration. So we have force of tension going towards the circle, so we're going to call that positive. Force of gravity going away. And this is going to be equal to the mass times acceleration centripetal, uh, which is mv squared over r. So force of tension, that's what we're looking for. Force of gravity is going to be 40. Mass is going to be 4. v squared, we found that, 15.49 squared, divided by r, which is 8. Now let's figure out what the force of tension is. 15.49 squared times 4 divided by 8 plus 40. And we get 160 newtons. Okay. And uh, that's all we're doing for today. I hope that made sense. I know I might have gone quickly through it, but hopefully um, you're able to stop it when necessary and everything like that. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.